Hello there everyone. Today I want to share with you a haul with several different things that I've gotten over the past while. So I hope you're going to enjoy going through this with me. So then let's begin. Now the first several things I want to show you is from a place that I go to every time I'm back home. So I went back home a little while ago here to visit my family. And what there is, is a wholesale shop there that deals with a lot of jewellery making materials. So they have all sorts, both from gemstones to materials, cord, and now they've started doing some new things as well. So I've got several new things that I was very interested in. So the first thing I want to start with is actually some seed beads. So having seed beads available is something that I've started fairly recently. So when I saw they started it, I knew that was one thing I really wanted to look at while I was there. So, because in my opinion, you can never really have too many seed beads in different colours. So that's one of the things that I went to look at. And I also got quite a few. Now, I did get quite a lot of seed beads, so I probably won't be able to fit them all in the frame here at the same time. So what I'm going to actually do is just split them up into colour sections. So I'm just going to do a few at a time. So the first batch of colours that I'm going to show you is these ones here, and it's the kind of red, orange, and yellowy colours. So it's all these, and all of the seed beads come in these containers here. They're all 25 grams in each one, so you get a really decent amount per container here. And these ones are actually some of my favourite ones, these specific ones. They kind of got a red base, but then they're coated with kind of an AB coating. So you have all this multicolour on top of them. So I've got... All the colours, like I said, I got at least one of each colour that they had, but some of the colours that I really liked, I then got several of the same colour as well. So for instance, for these, because I really like that colour, I actually got four tubes of that one. And then just a range of different reds, oranges, and yellows as well. And there's different finishes, some of them are just opaque. Then you got these with the AB coating on them. you just got some that are just coloured, but they're also clear. So got a really nice effect on them. So you get a really nice variation here, both in the colour scheme but also in the actual finishes. And then the next batch of colours here that I want to go through is along the same lines but you've got all the purpley and then the pink tones here. So you can see the purple end here and again, because obviously purple is my favourite colour, all the purple tones that they had, I got more than just one of all of them. And the nice pink ones as well. So again, here, this is kind of quite a dark purple but with that same finish. It's kind of got that crystal look to it, but at the same time there's some AB coating on it. So I really like them. It could be a really nice background and go with so many other things. And they also have this kind of pearly finish on some of the seed beads. I really like that finish as well. And then you can get these, they have them as well, where it's obviously a colour, but the actual bead itself is clear, but then it's the hole inside, so it's basically lined with the colour, and that's what adds the colour to the bead. So they're again quite different from then a lot of the others, so I do like having all the different finishes, and obviously the types of beads as well. And then in some of the colours they had, they also had this different shape of bead. Now again, it's still a CB, but it's a bit longer, and also this has actually got a bit of an hexagonal look to it, so it's almost got facets all the way around it, so it gives a completely different look, and gives a different kind of sparkle than the rest of them. So they had them in some of the colours. I think I only got that in this colour because I quite like that kind of light salmon colour. A bit of beige to it as well. So I got these in all the purples and the pinks shades as well. Then these ones here are all the blue tones that I got. So I got the most of these but that's because they had the most different variety of tones and kinds of blues in these seed beads. So that's why, obviously, again, I got a minimum of one of each of the blues that they had. And then some of them that I really liked the most, I got more than one. So for instance, this one is a nice, dark, rich blue. I got a few of them. And also that one here, again, has a bit of that AB coating on it. But a nice, bit of a different kind of blue. I also really like this one here. It's a lighter one, but again, it has that AB coating. It just gives a whole different play on the colour than just being a plain colour, which is also nice, I also got some of them. But these are all the blue ones, and again, it'll be it's really great, I think, to have all these different tones, because then you can either use just one for a project, or you can mix all the tones, but they'll still all match together. And then I also got a bunch of the darks here, so blacks and darker greys and some browns as well, because obviously they're always really good basics to have, I find. Now all these are black ones. I got quite a few of the blacks just because I, black is always a really good colour to have. It's good on its own, it's good as a background colour sometimes, and it just obviously it goes with everything, so I think you never have too many blacks, so I've got quite a few of those. And again, some different finishes here. 
And you also got some that kind of have this a little bit satin feel to them, satin look on the coating. But then otherwise greys and browns and blacks here. And then along the same lines as the black and the greys, I also got a bunch of these neutrals and whites. Again, because same principle, they're always really good to have both as basics on their own. They can be used for anything, but they also match with everything else pretty much. So some different finishes, that kind of satin finish, and different tones, some more beige, and then something that has a little bit of a pink undertone to it. More just kind of crystal colour there, so there's not actually really anything to it other than just a clear bead. And then just some white with, again, that kind of clear, but the AB coating to it as well, so it also gives it a bit of a play rather than just pure white. So I've got these as well, brilliant to have as stables. And the final batch of my colours here are the greens. So you see there's not that many, but there's just, I got pretty much one of each, and then the dark ones here, and then the light one with the AB coating, I got two of each, just because I really like those two greens. But again, otherwise just to have some different selections, depending on obviously what you want to use them for in whatever project. But as you can see, there was quite a few seed beads that I got in lots of different colours and finishes. And like I said, it was just really nice to have lots of seed beads in your stash because you never really know. You can always use them for something and sometimes you have a project in mind but you don't have the right ones. Whereas if you have a bunch in your stash, you're more likely to have them for your project without having to order them in and then wait for them to be able to make whatever you want to make. And like I said, these are 25 gram tubes. So again, decent sizes and they're going to last quite a while. And actually they were really good price as well. So like I said, these 25 gram tubes were the equivalent to about 50p each. So I thought that was a really good deal. And also they're pretty decent quality. So there's going to be a few in between where it looks like basically there's like a double bead, the size of it. But it's kind of just because one bead hasn't been split in two, into the two beads there. So, But they're quite easy to separate out from the rest of them. So I'm really pleased that I got all these seed beads and I have a nice decent stash that I've been wanting for a long time and the brilliant for anything beading kumuhimu as well so I'm really happy with all these seed beads so those are all the seed beads that I got from there like I said it's something more recent that they've started doing there and they've also started doing some other new things which I'm going to show you now now I also got a bunch of gemstones and findings and things like that I'm going to go through the first ones here are also some of the newer things they started doing and it's more high-end gemstones and cabochons so it's these ones here so I'm just going to take them out and look at them individually. So there's a few different ones. So all these here, these four are all labradorite. These cabochons here. I've got two ovals and one square. And then there's a hat, which has actually got a drill hole, but I don't particularly plan on using a drill hole. I just really like the hat shape and actually probably use it more like a cabochon. We got really beautiful flashes in all these, so they're really high quality. It's got lovely facets as well on the cabochon. Got all this play of the colour and levodorescence in them. And even the backs as well. They're flat on the back as the cabochons, but even the backs are actually quite beautiful. You get all that shiller as well. So I'm really pleased with that. I've been wanting something like this for a very long time. And looking for just the right ones. So these are really nice quality. So I'm pleased with them and can't wait to work with them. It'll most likely be wire work. I'm trying to figure out what I want to do. Again, the hat as well there. And then there's an amethyst cabochon, or cut stone rather. Quite large actually. Again, really beautiful colour. But it's not 100% a cabochon because it's not flat on the back, but it's more a cut stone. So it'll be brilliant. Ideal actually for prong setting as well. I'd probably say it's a little bit too large for a ring. Obviously that's personal preference, but for my taste, this I think would be ideal for a pendant or something. And then I also got these two little ones here. Now these are also a little bit more special. They're actually two ruby cabochons, or again cut stones rather. So really beautiful natural ruby. One in an oval, and then one in a bit of a rectangle shape here. And they're quite small because obviously ruby is a little bit more valuable here. So they're quite small. But my idea with these, obviously you can use them like other ones, cut stones. And you could quite easily prong set these. But I also want to collect more of these kinds of stones with the purpose of actually using them in metal clays in the future. Because I'm planning on getting into something like metal clay, so the silver clay, the copper clay. It's something I'm planning on doing in the near future. So things like these, I really want to get more of to also use for metal clay in that. But obviously, 
prong setting would be ideal as well. These would actually be perfect, I think, as a ring size. Just nice, like that. So I definitely want to see if I get more of this kind of thing as well. But otherwise, just join more high-end stones and cabochons as well. Collect them, use them for different things. So these were the kind of, again, a bit of a new thing they started. More of a higher-end gemstone and cabochon range. And things that I've been wanting for quite a while, but I've just been kind of looking for the right ones. So that's these here. So then, like I said, I got some more gemstones as well. And what I actually want to start doing is some more beading as well. So maybe some more beaded bracelets and that. But mainly, I do want to use gemstones still. I'm also going to be using some seed beads here and there. But I do want to use gemstones as well to make beaded bracelets, for instance. So that's why I also wanted to get a bunch of kind of basics and stables. So I got all these. So they're all the same. These are white jade, and you can see here I've got different sizes. They're all, like I said, the ge same gemstones, they're all white, and just plain rounds on strands. So they range in sizes. The larger ones here, these go from a size, these were 14 millimeter in diameter. Then the next ones down are the 12. So I've got some nice, these are quite nice and large, but you would use less of these naturally because they're larger than say the smaller ones and then they go down to an 8 mil and also an 8 so I've got two of the 8 mil I do find 8 mil is quite probably one of those I get used the most size wise so I've got two of that strand I've got a 6 mil here and also the smaller the size here the longer the strands are so some of these smaller ones are actually quite long strands and then they go down to four mil as well and I got four strands of the four mil because again you obviously use more of the smaller beads when you bead with them than you do with the large because they're smaller so I got quite a few of those four mil here so they're really good basics to have I find and obviously again because they're white they're going to go with pretty much everything else I also got kind of the same thing and the same principle but in black so I got all these here and I also kind of got them on purpose to, if I want to, I can make them go together. They'll be really nice together, make some monochrome looks. So the first one here is, again, this was a size 14 mil, so equivalent to the white ones down here. I've got a strand of this. These are all onyx, by the way. The black ones are all onyx. And these ones here, the 12 mil, but these are actually faceted, so they're just a little bit different. You can see the facet just gives it a really nice, beautiful sparkle to it different than just the plain rounds but I do really like having both anyway and then down to a 6 mil. again longer strands the smaller it gets and here I'm going all the way down to let's see at the end this was a 4 mil. yep and there's another one of that so I've got two strands of that 4 mil. And then I've got some, oh, three, sorry, there's another one there. And then I've got two strands of these really small ones, because these went even smaller that, than the white ones did. These are three millimeter ones. And you can see they're just that tad bit smaller, that'll be even, you'll be able to get even more detail in the beading there. So, i got all these, and you can see they'll work beautifully together, but also because they're whites and blacks, they'll literally go with everything else. So I'm really happy that I got all these as basics and I'm definitely going to incorporate these into start doing some beading as well. And then also got another couple of strands. And these are a little bit with the same thing in mind but also just really good basics to have I find. So these strands are all hematite. So I got two different sizes of these ones. These are kind of natural colour hematite. And you can see this kind of nice dark grey, a gunmetal type colour. So these ones here have got two strands of 3mm size ones. They're nice and small. And these here are even smaller. These are actually two millimeter in diameter, the size of the beads. So again, the same principle, these will go with everything. Also, especially the small ones here, that dark gunmetal color will really go with everything as well. Kind of the same principle as black. Another two strands of hematite I got were these ones. And these are just coated with silver. And the strands are actually really long, so you get a lot on that one strand. And these are, I think it was six mil. For these two silver ones, the same size. 
and again they'll just work with everything and again what I also find it's just the same with the onyx and the jade that I had hematite especially is one of those gemstones that I find if you want to use gemstones to bead with hematite is one of the best ones to use because in general when you use gemstones quite often they can be kind of irregular because it's through the nature of gemstones they're obviously natural and you can only do so much with them so even though you get a strand of formula they're not necessarily all going to be 100% the same as maybe seed beads would but hematite and I find onyx, agate, quartz and then also jade are some of the gemstones that I find are pretty much the most likely to be all the same or same as similar as possible to each other that then makes it easier to say to use in beading that way you need that size to be more uniform so that's why I really think it's great to have those kind of gemstones so if you do want to use gemstones for beading, I do recommend looking more for those types of gemstones because they do tend to be much more regular in the sizes. And then the last gemstones from there is just a little bag of some puffy coins here. We do have a hole going through them, so they are beads. But these are actually serpentine. And I just kind of saw them by coincidence and because a while back I got some cabochons that are serpentine. And I've been wanting to get some of the beads in serpentine for a while to, for example, maybe go along with the cabochons. So I just saw these by coincidence and I thought I'd just pick it up so I had a few of these. And I can imagine maybe kind of making links with these where you make a bit of a design as you're making the link over the top of the stones there. So that was my idea with them. I've then also got a couple of other strands here. Now these are not gemstones but these are actually some bicones and they're just made of glass. So I got some clear ones like that and then I got some black ones. Again, same principle, I thought it would be really good basics to have. They'd also be great to use for more beading. Because, say, bicones are used in beading, they add such a lovely sparkle. And these are actually really sparkly when you move them in the light because of the facets on them as well. And the bicone shape. So I don't know how that picks up, but they are really sparkly. And they're actually really good quality. These are about 3 mil. And on these, you actually have a bit of that AB coating because when you get it in just the right light, the sparkle from them is actually completely multicolored. You kind of get a rainbow color, so it's really beautiful. So just these to have as basics in my stash. So then, like I mentioned earlier, I also got some findings from that same place. And the first ones here that I want to show you are some clasps. Now, the ones that I got are these here. They look like this. So usually, I'm not too crazy about this type of clasp because what I've only ever seen them in the version that you get in plastic, you have this type of clasp here, it looks like that. I've only ever seen them in that plastic type and I personally don't like them. I find them quite not very nice looking and I also don't feel the, like they feel very sturdy. But then I actually saw these by coincidence and they're completely metal and I've never seen that before like I said. So I really like the look of that and they feel extremely sturdy and good quality. And then what there is, there's three different sizes here. So this is the middle one, it's got a small one and then a larger one here. That's what that looks like. So I've got a few here, two of each size I got, so I thought I have to cover. Obviously the size depends on the project that you're making, that will suit best. So the larger ones for a bit more of a chunkier piece and then the finer ones there, the small ones, if you don't want it to overpower too much. But I'm really kind of very much looking forward to trying to use these because like I said I've never been fond of this class but because it's all metal and I think it looks really nice as well, it can make it look really nice the actual finish of it rather than the plastic look as well. I'm quite excited about using these for something as well. Another class that I got was also one that I saw by coincidence and again one that I hadn't personally had before and it looks like these, I got two of them. The same one. And this is a little bit more unusual than just your regular type of clasp. Let's see if I can get into it. Again it's pure metal so it feel really nice and solid. And then you have these openings on each end, so obviously whatever it is that you've made you can kind of get in there and then use glue. And then you have the actual clasp here that just hooks up and connects like that. So also I think they're really easy to use, but it gives a really nice finish I think. It could give a really elegant look, obviously if it fits the project there. So I think it would be kind of nice to have also some different types here so it's not always necessarily the same clasp to use. Another kind of class thing that I got was some end caps and I do have a few of these but I've only actually really got one size because I kind of got them for a specific project but these ones they had quite a few different ones within in different sizes and that so I thought it would be really handy to get them 
So it's these kind of end caps, but where there isn't a loop or anything, it's actually a hole at the top, if you can see that. Maybe put in one of the big ones here. You've actually got a hole going through the top of it, rather than an actual loop on the top. Like your regular Kumihimo ends would have a loop that you can attach the clasp to, whereas here it's just got a hole. So for instance, you can put wire through it and then make your own loop or make your own clasp. So I've used this type before for some of my Kumihimo bracelets with wire. And I've done a tutorial of that already, so you can have a look at those. But that is what I like to use these for. You could obviously use them for kind of bead caps as well. So they do have different uses, but I thought it was quite handy to just have, make sure I have different sizes of them. Obviously again, depending on the project, you might need a different size. I then also got some rhinestone chain. I got these packs here. So it's basically just to kind of have them in my stash. It's actually quite chunky rhinestone chain, so the actual rhinestone in here are quite big. The links themselves and quite a decent length and different colour here. That's kind of a bit of a dark silver and then this kind of a muted rose gold. So again, nothing specific. I just kind of thought it would be kind of quite handy to have. And also, I actually don't have a rhinestone chain that's this chunky. Mine are a bit finer than this, so I thought you never know. You might need it in the future. And then I also got some more gemstones from different places. So the first one that I want to show you is some bundles of cabochons. So then the first bundle of my cabochons here is this one. And this is Dendry Agate. I'm just going to put them out here. And it's a mixed bundle where you get different shapes and sizes. Which I do really like getting them like that. Because you just get many different shapes and sizes that might be suitable for many different things. Maybe some that you wouldn't have got otherwise, but it turns out you can use them for something. So they look like this. And I just think they're really beautiful. I was waiting for these for a long time because I saw them ages ago. And I've kind of been waiting to get hold of them for a very long time. So I'm really glad that I got some now. And I definitely would love to get more of this. And also Dendry Opal is also pretty much very similar to the same thing. The same look. Obviously it's a different gemstone, but it looks very similar to this. This is just the agate version. I really like this. And I definitely can see this making some really nice pieces. In a way, what it reminds me a little bit of is like a snowy landscape where you then have the nature, the darkness in, say, some trees and nature and that, and some of the stones. So I really like that as well. It really gives me that kind of snowy landscape feel to it. So I got these, and I'm really pleased that I got these cabochons. Can't wait to work with them as well. So the next bundle of cabochons here was actually a gemstone that I'd never heard of before I saw this bundle. But when I saw it, I really just kind of fell for it. And it's this, it's called Stitch Tight, the gemstone. Again, it's a bundle here, some different sizes and shapes. And they look like this. So the purple and this green tone mixed together. And this beautiful patterning, just completely natural patterning there, with them being gemstones. And there's just, there was just something about them that really spoke to me. I don't even know really what it was. Obviously the purple, because purple is my favourite colour. But there was just something so different about them that I hadn't ever seen before in anything else. And also what you'll actually be able to see, it might not come across on the camera, but in some of the purple areas there's actually an optical play where you actually get, like you get in some other gemstones where you get like a play on the optical effects by moving it in the light here. So that's a really nice edit feature as well. As you can see some really nice ones here and pretty nice sizes. They're not too small, not too large to use. They can pretty much be used for many different things, both maybe rings or some of the smaller ones, but also some nice sized pendant ones here. So again, a new gemstone. I always like finding new gemstones that I haven't heard about, but that I then really find out that I like. So that's one of these here. I'll definitely be looking for more of these as well in the future. The next bundle was also a gemstone that I hadn't seen or heard of before I saw this, and it's this one here. So again, this is a bundle of cabochons, and this is Morado Opal. We've got this nice purpley tone to it. So, like I said, again, I'd never heard or seen of this gemstone before I saw this. Now, obviously, I do know of opal, and there's lots of different kinds of opal, but I just, I'd just i never seen or heard of this specific type of it, with these really beautiful purple colours to them. And just again, it makes a completely different patterning and a few other colours mixed in with it. So again, different shapes and sizes. 
some oval ones mainly here and then this kind of rectangular one so again I really liked like I said discovering these new gemstones and trying out some other ones and just to see what else is out there and also obviously every gemstone will then have a different effect and different impact on the piece you make and go with different say if you want to use white as say silver or copper so I definitely am glad I got these as well and experiment with these and I think these make some really nice pieces so this next bundle was again a gemstone that I hadn't heard or seen of before and it's these here so what these are is mesolite gemstone again obviously in cabochons in some different sizes these are all happen to be ovals but what they are is kind of they have this really lovely optical play to them and that's kind of what caught my eye they're very neutral obviously in the colours here so they'll go with loads of different things I think copper would be really nice with them as well but they have this kind of almost feather like patterning to it but then the actual pattern itself has this kind of optical effect when you move it in the light I don't know how well it comes across but it really does in real life they're actually really beautiful so there was just something about them that really captured me and again I think they could make really elegant pieces because they have these neutral colours but have this really lovely elegant optical effect to them as well the next bundle here that I then have to show you is a gemstone that I do know of and I also have some previous pieces of and it's this and this is a bundle of cabochons of malachite so I've had some previous bundles of malachite cabochons as well that I've shown in some previous hauls this is then a different bundle and this is something about malachite that really attracts me usually I'm not that attracted to green I think it's a beautiful colour I don't mind it I'm just not that attracted to it but Malachite, I found, is actually definitely my favourite green gemstone. I just think there's something really beautiful about it, that depth of colour and the different tones that you get within the natural patterning as well. So this is another bundle of a Malachite cabochons here. And it's really beautiful patterning, that really deep green tone to it. So again, i got some more of them. So like I said, Malachite just for some reason really attracts me. So this next one here is a bundle of some cabochons that are a bit more specific. So it's not kind of a random one where you get random sizes and shapes. You get these three of obviously the same gemstones. This is all fluorite cabochons, but the same shape and the same size are all of them. And again, there's something about fluorite that really attracts me. I obviously love that it has this purple tone to it most of the time, really deep and different purple tones. But then also it mixed in with other colours as well and then the banding and patterning that you get on them. So I don't have any cabochons in this size or shape, I have some other ones but I really thought it would be nice with some really small dainty ones here. Perfect for rings or a nice delicate pendant. So I got this bundle as well. So the next cabochons that I'm going to show you are actually all the same gemstone and they're also the same size and shape but I didn't get these in a bundle. I kind of actually bought these separately so a few at a time but they are all the same which is exactly what I wanted because what I've actually have, I've been looking for basically specific of these gemstones, cabochons for a while because I've had an idea that I want to do for the future of a bigger project so I've got all these cabochons here because they fit just perfectly I was looking for this neutral kind of cabochon, so oval, a decent size like this so not too small, not too big and also a nice neutral black background colour just like these are and what I actually was looking for, I wanted 12 of them in total for the project that I have in mind. They're not all going to be used in the same project. It's kind of more multiple different things, but they're all connected. So it's kind of one bigger project like that. So these are all those cabochons. So I'm then glad I managed to find these cabochons because I was looking for something just like this for quite a while with the idea that I had. But then also that I then managed to get hold of enough because like I said, I've got 15 in total, but I need 12 specifically for, for that project. But also with these in general, I really like just having this kind of cabochon in my stash because they're nice neutral ones that you can always use. Especially when I say when I use wire. So f capture the cabochon with wire, but then make a design on the front of it. So have the cabochon actually be the background. That's so why I really like having cabochons like this in my stash for that as well. So that project that I'm talking about is not going to be just yet that I'm going to be doing it and showing it and probably making some tutorials for it as well. But I have these and I'm glad so at least I have these ready for when I do make it. So it's going to be a little while. But at least I got these cabochons now so I don't have to worry about looking for them anymore. 
And then along the same lines of the previous ones, I also got two of these cabochons here. So the same gemstone, black onyx here, and then just teardrop shaped, but the same size as the oval ones, just obviously with a different shape here. And again, there wasn't a specific reason for these ones though. I kind of just thought they'd be really nice to have in the stash with them being very neutral cabochons. Obviously this completely black background colour would be useful to have and also this very common and nice useful shape as well in the teardrop. So the next few things I'm going to show you are still some gemstones but these are all strands and pretty much all of these I got on clearance so I got really good deals for them. Now the very first one here is this and this is a little bit different than what I would normally get. It's a bit unusual for me. And what these are, the dyed quartz so they're actually a huge strand here. This is actually one meter long, this whole strand. And it goes from the ends, they're kind of smaller and they graduate to be bigger and bigger. That really, this beautiful deep purple color. That's what really attracted to me, attracted me to them the most. Obviously the color here. So a massively long strand and obviously I like them because I was attracted to them but usually I wouldn't really go for this kind of thing where the irregular shape like this um, I'm more attracted to the kind of circles, the rounds and squares and where it's more symmetrical but there's just something about them, obviously mainly the colour but I also kind of thought they'd be nice to necessarily not even use in jewellery but put them in some kind of little jar or something and then use them for display or a little bowl so the options obviously endless but also it could be nice to just use maybe one do some wire wrapping around it, but you still have this really beautiful purple colour as a background. So I got these also because they're actually about a third of the original price, so I thought why not just go for it and see what I maybe can come up with doing with them. And then the following strands here were also part of a clearance, like I said, with that strand I just showed you. And I'm just going to show you them all together here. Just take them a bit at a time. First ones here are some quartz really beautiful kind of this purpley magenta coloured quartz and I got two strands of these because I really really like the colour it's just something really beautiful that and again this I think this goes really well with copper I see with my ring there goes really nicely with copper this colour obviously silver would be nice as well but then silver goes with everything I think and the next ones these are about 10 mil I think they were or 8 mil and again, these are the same, also quartz, same size, regular rounds, but it's just kind of really nice, a bit lighter blue dyed quartz. And it's not 100% opaque, it's a bit of clarity to it as well. So I really like them, and again, that would also work really well with both copper and silver, I think. And I also got these a little bit with a mind of doing some more beading, like I talked about, talked about previously. I want to do a bit more beading. So these are really good for that because obviously regular rounds are brilliant for that and quartz tend to be much more regular in gemstones, so the same size which is a bit more handy for beading obviously. And I got this strand. And this, I actually have a strand similar to this but it's a different size. But then when I saw this in the clearance I just had to get this as well because this is one of my all time favourite things, favourite strands that I've seen ever really. I just really love this colour combination. Again it's quartz but it's multicoloured quartz. I just really love the combination of the colours in this one. And obviously it's faceted so it just sparkles so beautifully as well. And like I said, all this colour combination you can either separate them out, use the colours individually or use them as they are because they really all go together really well. So I had to get a strand of those. The next one, again, is kind of just to have as a basic in the stash. And this is a strand of just blue dyed quartz as well, a bit more opaque and obviously a darker blue than the other one. Again, same size. And then we're going to some other ones here. This strand I actually also just got with mind of having it in my stash as a good basic stable one. And these are actually black quartz but in rondelles, so little quite small rondelles really. And again also has some facetings so a nice sparkle to them. I thought that'd be really good as a stable because you never know what they might come in handy for. And then I got some really tiny gemstones on some strands. Now this specific one is a moss agate and these are tiny little 2mm gemstones. Now I actually have had this strand previously 
You might have seen it in a different haul if you saw that. And they're really beautiful and sparkly here in the colours because obviously they have nice facets on them. Even though they are so tiny, they still have facets and sparkle beautifully. But that strand I've actually pretty much used up because I used that strand to make my Tree of Life wire work ring. So, and that ring actually turned out to be quite popular. So I kind of thought also with it being in the clearance, I could quite easily use another one just in case I wanted to use more for the ring or just have it for other things. So, got one of those, and the last one out of these strands was a strand of purple fluorite. Fluorite is also one of my more favourite gemstones. And these are some small ones again, about 3mm these are, and again different tones throughout, also with faceted, faceted rounds here. And again, because I have some cabochons now in fluorite, I kind of thought having some actual rounds but also some smaller ones would be really handy because then if I wanted to make a chain, my own chain, to go with a cabochon or pendant that I make, I have these that will fit perfectly just for that. So I got these kind of pretty stables and basics, regular rounds, most of them are some of them faceted here, again in the clearance so I got some really good deals with those. So the last thing I got in the clearance were these gemstones here. Now these are some cut gemstones, some really nice and high quality clear quartz that are cut in these rounds and got beautiful faceting to them so this is them and I take one out here so this is what it looks like so it's a really beautiful cut gemstone you can see really high quality it's a really clear nice clear quartz there and again these will be perfect for making prong setting with these whether it's a ring here like that so a prong set ring but also I want to get more of these kinds of gemstones where it's cut gemstones both for actual prong setting for the purpose of that but then also for like I mentioned earlier in the future I want to start doing metal clays in that so these are also got in clearance like I said and these were actually about a third of the original price so that was a really good deal compared to the normal price so I'm really glad that I got some of these in my stash now as well. So the last two cabochons that I want to show you were also some that I was looking for specifically because I had an idea in mind again for the kind of future, the near future of something that I want to try and do so I was specifically looking for something like this. So these are two black onyx cabochons Kind of like the other ones, but in this case, they're just completely round. And that's exactly what I was looking for. But some that weren't too big and also not too small. So these were just perfect. And I kind of got two, obviously. Just, again, because they're nice to have a moustache. But also to kind of test it out first. And then if I wanted to do a tutorial as well. So, it's just the idea I had in mind. It's maybe more towards Halloween, I was actually thinking about. So we'll see if it works out. But that's what I got these for. Well, very specifically for that project. I then also have a few individual strands of gemstones that I got from eBay actually and these are all hematite so hematite is one of my favourite gemstones at all so I got these because they were a little bit different and unusual and I saw them by coincidence and I kind of thought I have to have them and see what they actually look like in real life so I got these two strands here, this is like a bronzy coppery tone it's a bit more bronze than copper I think even though I think it was described as copper but it's fine, I still use it. And also this one, this one was very different, I thought. I do like hematite just as a stone itself, but I really like the different varieties as well, so the different coatings you can get and colours in that, and also finishes, so that is why it's one of my very favourite gemstones. But this colour, I don't actually personally think I've actually ever seen before, because you can get your typical kind of blue coated, purple coated, but this one is more like a teal, very green teal to it, and I thought it was a very interesting colour. So I got that one, just to have in my stash. Then I got these two strands as well. They're both the same, I'm just going to open one because the other one is kind of broken a bit so some of the stones are loose. But they're exactly the same. And what they are, these are blue coated hematite. And these are about 4mm, with the other ones here I think they're about 8mm. But the difference with these blue ones, again is something I haven't actually seen before. These are kind of like a more of a matte satin finish to the actual finish of the stone, whereas these ones here are nice and kind of shiny because that's more the nature of hematite, but these have been kind of made 
a bit matte and satin like the finish of them and I actually really like it. So I'm definitely going to look out for more of that. And like I said, both of them are the same. You get pretty decent amounts on all of these strands, quite long, regular size strands here. So I'm quite glad that I did see them by coincidence, these, especially the blue ones here, the kind of matte ones. I definitely will look into more of those. So from eBay as well, I also got some bicones, and these are some glass bicones. And again, these were mainly just to basically have in my stash. I wanted to try and find some nice quality ones, but they don't necessarily cost a fortune. Because sometimes really nice quality bicones can kind of get quite expensive. And that's fine, but it's just I would like to have some in my stash as well that I can just have and use without having necessarily to buy them for a specific project. But that is still a nice, decent quality. And like I said, these are just from eBay, and you buy them like this, in this kind of mixed colour selection. And you get quite a few in each, and they were a really good price. And actually the quality of them is pretty good actually. So you can see around the holes in that, and the sparkle from them is really nice, and the variety of colour here. Now I'm probably going to spend a bit of time at some point actually separate out the colours and put them in each their container. I think I prefer to do that because I'm most likely going to use the colours separate from each other. But then at least I have some bicolons here for my stash and they're about 4 mil I think they were. So they'll be good to have in the stash as well. So the final single item that I got here that's kind of jewellery related is this actual finding, it's this chain. So I've been looking for quite a long time for a copper chain. and. I don't know why, but it's something I seem to really struggle finding. I don't know why it's so hard to get hold of. But I found this on a website, and I thought I'd give it a try. And it's alright. It's definitely some of the better chain that I found. Now, the thing is, I know you can get a lot of copper chain, but pretty much all the chain that I find is antique copper, and that's not what I want. I would really love bright copper chain, just like, say, if you have copper wire, like what I've used for my ring here. I really want the bright, but for some reason, I can't seem to find that anywhere. Um, so I gave this a try and it's definitely alright but it's still not quite as kind of nice and bright as I would like it. So for instance when you have the copper wire there. Because I'm not interested in the antique copper because you can find loads of that. But I don't really know why you can't find the bright copper chain especially. But I found this and it's okay but I still would like some that's a bit brighter. So if you have any suggestions for if you know of a place that I just haven't stumbled across yet. Because I have looked in a lot of places and I can't really seem to find any and ideally obviously it's not too crazy with shipping as well so if you can find and if you know of any place that has something like that please do let me know so the next items I'm going to show you is kind of moving away from the jewelry related items so much and it's still gemstones but what I also actually like is collecting gemstones so in raw form and slabs and things like that and just have them for display so I want to show you some of them as well that I've been getting over the past while so these are the first ones. These are some purple agate slabs. And obviously purple again, so I couldn't really stand for these. I kind of had to get them. Really beautiful. And they have druze in the middle as well, some of them. Really beautiful colouring here. And I do really like this kind of slabs as well. Because you get all this banding and the beautiful colour and some of them have druze in them. And you kind of get a little bit of this raw form, but they're still nicely polished. And look really nice to just have on display, really. And I also got some more slabs than that. So these next ones here are all from the same place. When I went back home to visit my family as well, kind of stumbled across these and I just had to get a bunch of them because they were so beautiful, I thought. So the first two here are purple again. Really beautiful purple agate slabs. And you can see this really lovely banding with different tones. And both sides are really nice. And then I also got some other colours. So I got some blue ones. And it's really beautiful colouring. A more rounded one, and just, and I think the richness of the colours as well are just really beautiful colours. How rich and deep they are, and this one is a bit more special, I think, as well. Again, the blue colours, but this almost to me looks like you're standing inside a cave, looking out towards the ocean or the sea, and then you have the sea, then you've got the sky. So that's what it just kind of is saying to me. That's what it looks like. So. I really like that kind of thing as well. You can just see things, see images in whether it's in cabochons or whether it's in slabs or raw gemstones. And then I also got a pink one here. Because again, really beautiful deep colouring. And I just really like this kind of thing as well. Slabs and just have them for display. My plan actually is to obviously have them for display in like a cabinet or something, but then make some little stands for all of them in wire. 
So just some little simple stands so they can actually stand up and be displayed nicely instead of just lying down. But make it with just some basic wire, a bit thicker gauge there. It's also not going to take away from it too much. So these are some of the slabs I also got along with the other ones. I can't wait to get them properly displayed, like I said, making those little stands I think could be quite cool. And then from the same place that I got these slabs that I just showed you, I also got some chunks of Druzy here. Again, obviously I had to go for the purple colour. But, like, obviously the purple I can't really resist that, but also Druzy is one of my most favourite things and I can't really resist when I see Druzy. I kind of figured out along the way. I just have a real weakness for Druzy. This is the back of them, so you got the colour going all the way around. You just have this really beautiful sparkle on the inside there because of the druzy. So again, these will be really nice just to have on display along with the rest of them. So another chunk of raw gemstone that I got was this amethyst one. And it looks like this. So the outside is this. And then you have the amethyst growing on the inside of that. You get this really beautiful kind of, what I see, cave full of amethyst. It's almost like a mini cave. So I have this for display as well, and this was actually my mum that found this for me. She saw it somewhere and she thought of me because she knows I like these kind of things, and I've started collecting them. So this is the biggest piece that I have at the moment of this kind of thing, but I'm hoping to collect even bigger ones along the way in the future. But this is definitely a good start, and I really, I just like this kind of thing where you see the raw side of it and how it grows, and obviously you've got the outside of it, and you get this really beautiful amethyst on the inside. And then she also actually found these two chunks of amethyst for me. Again, she saw them and thought of me. So these really beautiful chunks of amethyst. So you got obviously the kind of more white colour, but then you got really deep and dark purple colour right on the tip here. So again, with the intention of having them for display, it would make really nice display pieces, I think. You can really see that rawness of the amethyst again. So that was it for this haul then. A little bit of a variety of some different things, both some jewellery related things, cabochons, strands of gemstones, but also the more raw side and slabs of gemstones. I thought I wanted to show you them as well because I've started collecting them a lot more recently. So I really hope you enjoyed this haul and maybe gave you some ideas of some things that might be coming in the future. And thank you very much for watching. Hello there everyone. Today I want to show you how to make this wireframe cabochon with a rose on the front of it. So it can look like this. And this is the one I'm going to show you how to make today. So for this one I used a nice and dark gemstone cabochon behind it. So it works perfectly for uniform cabochons colour wise. And also I've done a different one previously where I use a rose quartz cabochon. So you can see the different looks that you can get just using different materials. And they'll never come out looking exactly the same which is always nice.